Professor Quincy Adams Wagstaff. Members of the faculty, faculty members, students of Huxley and Huxley students. I guess that covers everything. Well, I thought my razor was dull until I heard his speech. And that reminds me of a story that's so dirty, I'm ashamed to think of it myself. Professor Wagstaff, of course, is the inimitable Groucho Marx. Signor Emmanuel Ravelli. How do you do? Say, I used to know a fellow looking exactly like you by the name of uh, Emmanuel Ravelli. Are you his brother? I am Emmanuel Ravelli. You're Emmanuel Ravelli? I am Emmanuel Ravelli. Well, no wonder you look like him. But I still insist there is a resemblance. <laughs> He thinks I look alike. Senor Ravelli, of course, is the inimitable Chico Marx. And last but not least, for the first time on any record, the one and only Harpo Marx. The gate swung open and a fig Newton entered. How do you do? Who is he? That's my partner, but he no speak. Oh, that's your silent partner. Yes, these are the fabulous Marx Brothers, who created a style of comedy that has never been matched. Their target was the establishment, and they specialized in throwing low blows at people in high places, like educators. And I say to you, gentlemen, that this college is a failure. The trouble is we're neglecting football for education. Exactly. The, the professor, professor is right. right. Oh, I'm right, am I? Well, I'm not right, I'm wrong. I just said that to test you. Now I know where I'm at. I'm dealing with a couple of snakes. What I meant to say was that there's too much football and not enough education. That's, That's what, what I, I think. think. Oh, you do, do you? Well, you're wrong again. If there was a snake here, I'd apologize. Where would this college be without football? Have we got a stadium? Yes. Have we got a college? Yes. Well, we can't support both. Tomorrow we start tearing down the college. But, but professor, professor, where, where will, will the, the students, students sleep? sleep? Where well, they always sleep, in the classroom. They satirized protocol between diplomats. Now, how about lending this country $20 million, you old skin flint? $20 million is a lot of money. I shall have to take that up with my Minister of Finance. Well, in the meantime, could you let me have $12 until payday? They lampoon business executives. Uh, take a letter. Who to? To my dentist. Uh, dear dentist, enclosed fine check for $500, yours very truly. Send that off immediately. I'll, uh, I'll have to enclose the check first. You do, and I'll fire you. They ridiculed the law. I didn't know you were a lawyer. You're awfully shy for a lawyer. You bet I'm shy. I'm a shy for a lawyer. They mocked respect for womanhood. As chairwoman of the reception committee, I welcome you with open arms. Is that so? How late do you stay open? I've sponsored your appointment because I feel you are the most able statesman in all Fredonia. Well, that covers a lot of ground. Say, you cover a lot of ground yourself. Oh, your excellency. You're not so bad yourself. You better beat it. I hear they're going to tear you down and put up an office building where you're standing. You can leave in a taxi. If you can't get a taxi, you can leave in a huff. If that's too soon, you can leave in a minute and a huff. You know you haven't stopped talking since I came here? You must have been vaccinated with a phonograph needle. What do you say? I said... Pardon me, what did you say? I said, beat it! He said, beat it. Gee, I wish I'd have said that. Everybody's repeating it around the club. There is no doubt that Groucho Marx is the all-time master of the devastating insult. He believed that if you couldn't say anything nice to a person, go ahead and say it. Would you mind going out and crossing the boulevard when the lights are against you? The next time I see you, remind me not to talk to you, will you? You're heading for a breakdown. Why don't you pull yourself to pieces? How much am I paying you, fellas? Five thousand a year. But we've never been paid. Well, in that case, I'll raise you to eight thousand. And a bonus. Bring your dog around, I'll give him a bonus, too. With a little study, you'll go a long ways, and I wish you'd start now. You know I could rent you out as a decoy for duck hunters? Baravelli, you've got the brain of a four-year-old boy, and I bet he was glad to get rid of it. Why don't you bore a hole in yourself and let the sap run out? How much would you want to stand at the wrong end of a shooting gallery? You're just wasting your breath, and that's no great loss either. You suppose I could buy back my introduction to you? I've got a good mind to join a club and beat you over the head with it. Of course, as always, Groucho's favorite targets were symbols of authority, like the captain of a luxury liner. Are you the floor walker of this ship? Floor? I want to register a complaint. Why, what's the matter? Matter enough. You know who sneaked into my stateroom at 3 o'clock this morning? Who did that? Nobody, and that's my complaint. Another thing, I don't care for the way you're running this boat. 
Why don't you get in the back seat for a while and let your wife drive? I want you to know I've been captain of this ship for 22 years. 22 years, eh? If you were a man, you'd go in business for yourself. I know a fella started only last year with just a canoe. Now he's got more women than he can shake a stick at, if that's your idea of a good time. Here, he socks it to the head of a university. My dear professor, I'm sure the students would appreciate a brief outline of your plans for the future. What? I said the students would appreciate a brief outline of your plans for the future. You just said that. That's the trouble around here. Talk, talk, talk. Oh, sometimes I think I must go mad. Where will it all end? What is it getting you? Why don't you go home to your wife? I'll tell you what, I'll go home to your wife, and outside of the improvements, you'll never know the difference. Here, he manages to insult the entire cabinet of a country. All right, meetings call to order. Your Excellency, here's the Treasury Department's report. I hope you find it clear. Clear? <laughs> Why, a four-year-old child could understand this report. Run out and find me a four-year-old child. I can't make head or tail out of it. And now, members of the cabinet, we'll take up old business. I wish to discuss the tariff. Sit down, that's new business. No old business? Very well. And we'll take up new business. Now about that tariff. Too late. That's old business already. Sit down. Gentlemen, as your Secretary of War, I... The Secretary of War is out of order. Which reminds me, so is the plumbing. Make a note of that. Never mind, I'll do it myself. The Department of Labor wishes a report that the workers of Fredonia are demanding shorter hours. Very well, we'll give them shorter hours. We'll start by cutting their lunch hour to 20 minutes. Gentlemen, gentlemen, enough of this. How about taking up the tax? How about taking up the carpet? I still insist we must take up the tax. He's right. You've got to take up the tax before you can take up the carpet. I give all my time and energy to my duties, and what do I get? You get awfully tiresome after a while. Sir, you try my patience. I don't mind if I do. You must come over and try mine sometime. The insult is so much a part of the Groucho character that he even uses it when he makes love to a woman. Can't you see what I'm trying to tell you? I love you. Why don't you marry me? Why, marry you? You take me and I'll take a vacation. I'll need a vacation if we're going to get married. Married. I can see you right now in the kitchen, bending over a hot stove. But I can't see the stove. Come, come, say the word, and you'll never see me again. Gloria. What are you thinking of? I suppose you'll think me a sentimental old fluff, but uh, would you mind giving me a lock of your hair? A lock of my hair? <laughs> Why, I had no idea. I'm letting you, you off were... easy. I was going to ask for the whole wig. No one was immune from insult, not even his son. Dad? Let me congratulate you. I'm proud to be your son. My boy, you took the words right out of my mouth. I'm ashamed to be your father. I'd horsewhip you if I had a horse. You may go now. Leave your name and address with the girl outside, and if anything turns up, we'll get in touch with you. Where are you going? Well, you just told me to go. So that's what they taught you in college. Just when I tell you to go, you leave me. You know you can't leave a schoolroom without raising your hand no matter where you're going. Anything further, father? Anything further, father? That can't be right. Isn't it anything farther further? The idea. I married your mother because I wanted children. Imagine my disappointment when you arrived. You call this a barn? This looks like a stable. Well, if you look at it, it's a barn. If you smell it, it's a stable. Well, let's just look at it. That was Chico Marx. He was master of what can be called affable insanity, the comedy of the absurd. You are one of the musicians, but you ain't not do until tomorrow. Couldn't come tomorrow, that's too quick. Say, you're lucky they didn't come yesterday. We were busy yesterday, but we charge just the same. What do you fellas get an hour? Oh, for playing, we get $10 an hour. I see. What do you get for not playing? $12 an hour. Well, clip me off a piece of that. Now, for rehearsing, we make special rate. That's a $15 an hour. That's for rehearsing? That's a for rehearsing. And what do you get for not rehearsing? You couldn't afford it. <laughs> you see, if we don't rehearse, so we don't play. And if we don't play, that runs into money. Well, let's see how we stand. Flat for it. Yesterday, we didn't come. You remember yesterday we didn't oh, come? Oh, I remember. Yeah, that's $300. Yesterday you didn't come, that's $300. Yeah, that's $300. Well, that's reasonable. I can see that all right. Now, today we did come. That's, uh... That's 100 you owe us. Hey, I bet I'm going to lose on the deal. Tomorrow we leave. That's worth about... A million dollars. Yeah, that's all right for me, but I got a partner. Chico, as the most implausible spy in history, reports to his superior. Well, you remember you gave us a picture of this man and said, follow him? Oh, yes. Well, we get on the job right away. And in the one hour, even in less than one hour... Yes? We lose the picks. That's a pretty quick wait, eh? I want a full, detailed report of your investigation. All right, I tell you. 
Monday, we watch the Firefly's house, but he no come out. He wasn't home. Tuesday, we go to the ball game, but he fool us. He no show up. Wednesday, he go to the ball game, and we fool him. We no show up. Thursday was a doubleheader. Nobody show up. Friday, it rained all day. There was no ball game. So we stayed home. We listened to her over the radio. Then you didn't shadow Firefly. Oh, sure, we shadow Fire. We shadow him all day. But what day was that? Saturday. <laughs> it's a, some joke, eh, boss? Terrible puns like Shadow Day are all part of Chico's technique. You sing a high, huh? Yes, I have a falsetto voice. That's a funny. My last pupil, she got a false set of teeth. Marxian punning reaches a new high or low, whichever you prefer, in this scene where Chico is on trial for high treason. Isn't it true you tried to sell Fredonia's secret war code and plans? Sure, I sold a code and two pair of plans. <laughs> it's some joke, eh, boss? Gentlemen, Ciccolini here may talk like an idiot and look like an idiot, but don't let that fool you. He really is an idiot. I implore you, send him back to his father and brothers who are waiting for him with open arms in the penitentiary. I suggest that we give him 10 years in Leavenworth or 11 years in Twelveworth. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll take five and ten in Woolworth. Chico was at his best as a foil for Groucho, as in this scene in a speakeasy. Hey, Barabelli. What do you want? Watch the door for a few minutes. And don't let anyone in without the password. All right, what is it? Swordfish is the password, do you understand? Okay, I got it. Well, what is it? Password. Swordfish, swordfish! Right, the swordfish, the swordfish. We uh, had some muscles in the room full of faccia doozy pats. Who are you? I'm fine, thanks. Who are you? I'm fine, too, but you can't come in unless you give the password. Oh, what is the password? Oh, no, you gotta tell me. Hey, I tell what I do, I give you three guesses. It's the name of a fish. Is it Mary? Ha, <laughs> ha, that's an old fish. She isn't one. She drinks like one. Let me see. Is it Sturgeon? Hey, you're crazy. Sturgeon, he's a doctor who cuts you open when you're sick. Now, I give you one more chance. I got it. Haddock. That's a funny. I got a haddock, too. What do you take for a haddock? Well, now, sometimes I take aspirin, or sometimes I take a calomel. Say, I'd walk a mile for a calomel. You mean chocolate calomel. I like that, too, but you know, guess it. Hey, what's the matter? You don't understand English? You can't come in here unless you say swordfish. Now, I'll give you one more guess. Swordfish. I think I got it. Is it swordfish? <laughs> That's it, you guess it. <laughs> These are the sounds of the great Harpo Marks. Although Harpo never spoke a word in the movies, the audience always knew what he was thinking. Did you see a handkerchief? I thought I dropped one, but it really doesn't matter because what I'm really interested in is you. Did anyone ever tell you that you looked like the Prince of Wales? That's funny. I thought it was an original idea of mine. Tell me, do you know who I am? Do you know my room number? Well... I'll be there at 11 o'clock tonight. Although he didn't use the spoken word, he did use sound and could express every emotion with it. Love. Hate. Love, love. Anger. Chagrin. Even contempt. <laughs> Here's the classic scene where the kindly policeman advises him to stay away from the wrong kind of people and as he pumps Harpo's hand, silverware keeps falling from his other sleeve. You better come with me, young fellow. Don't take him away, officer. All right. I let him go this time. But I want to give you some advice. You're running around with the wrong kind of people. Now, why don't you go home? He's got no home. Go home for a few nights and stay home. Don't you know your poor old mother sits there? Sits there night after. Night after night, waiting to hear your steps on the stairs. And God knows stairs. And I can see a little light burning in, the, burning in the window. No, you can't. The gas company turned it off. Now, what I'm telling you is for your own sake. And if you listen to me, you can't go wrong. 
this may go on for years. Now there's just one... I can't understand what's delaying that coffee pot. But of all the sounds of Harpo, there was one for which he was most famous. unless you pay the bill. How much do we owe you? $2,000. $2,000 for ice? I can get an Eskimo for $200 and make my own ice. I tell you what we do. I make you a proposition. You owe us $200. We take $2,000 and call it square. That's not a bad idea. I'll tell you. I'll consult my lawyer. And if he advises me to do it, I'll get a new lawyer. This kind of zany dialogue is what the Marx Brothers are all about. Like the man in the story, they jump on the plot and ride off in all directions as in this epic scene where Groucho applies to a gangster for the job of bodyguard. You're just the man I want to see. If I could show you how to save 20%, would you be interested? Of course you would. In the first place, your overhead is too high and your brow is too low. Interested already, aren't you? I right. Now, just wait till I get through. I haven't got time. Now, there are two fellas trying to attack you, aren't there? And there are two fellas trying to defend you. Now, why? that's 50% waste. Now, why can't you be attacked by your own bodyguards? Your life will be saved and that's 100% uh, that's waste. Now, what do you got? You still got me, and I'll attack you for nothing. Say, what are you getting at? I anticipated that question. How does an army travel? On its stomach. How do you travel? On a ship. Of course, you're saving your stomach. Now, that same common sense... I don't say... think you realize... Oh, I realize it's a penny here and a penny there, but look at me. I've worked myself up from nothing to a state of extreme poverty. Now, what do you say? I'll tell you what I say. I say... All right, then it's all settled. I'm to be your new bodyguard. In case I'm going to attack you, I'll have to be there to defend you, too. Now, let me know when you want to be attacked, and I'll be there ten minutes later to defend you. And finally, the peak in sheer zaniness. Groucho dictates a letter to his lawyer, Mr. Hunger Dunga. Jamison? Yes, sir. Take a letter to my lawyers. I say, take a letter to my lawyers. Honorable Charles H. Uh, Hunger Dunga. Care of Hunger Dunga, Hunger Dunga, Hunger Dunga, Hunger Dunga, and McCormick. Semicolon. How do you spell semicolon? All right, make it a comma. Honorable Charles H. Hunger Dunga. Care of Hunger Dunga, Hunger Dunga, and McCormick. Gentlemen, question mark. <laughs> Do you want that uh, in the letter? No, put that in an envelope. Now then. In Ray Yours of the Fifth Inch, yours to hand and beg to rep, brackets, that uh, we have gone over the ground carefully and we seem to believe, i.e., to wit, e.g., in lieu, that uh, despite all our precautionary measures which have been involved, uh, we seem to believe that it is hardly necessary for us to proceed Unless we uh, receive an ipso facto that is not negligible at this moment, quotes, unquotes, and quotes, uh, hoping this finds you, I beg to remain... Hoping this finds him where? Well, let him worry about that. Don't be so inquisitive, Jamison. Sneak. I say, hoping this finds you, I beg to remain as of June 9th, cordially yours regard. That's all, Jamison. Now, read me the letter, Jamison. Honorable Charles H. Hungerdunger. 
Honga Donga. Hong. Hong. Honga Donga. That's it. Honga Donga. In care of Honga Donga, Honga Donga, Honga Donga, and McCormick. You've left out a Honga Donga. You left out the main one, too. Thought you could slip one over on me, didn't you, eh? All right, leave it out and put in a windshield wiper instead. I'll tell you what you do, Jamison. I'll tell you what. Make it, uh, make it three windshield wipers and one Honga Donga. They won't all be there when the letter arrives, anyhow. Honga Donga, Honga Donga, Honga And McCormick. And McCormick. Gentlemen, question mark. Gentlemen, question mark. Put it on the penultimate, not on the diphthonic. You want to brush up on your Greek, Jamison. Well, get a Greek and brush up on him. In re yours of the fifth inch. I see. Now, uh, you said a lot of things here that I didn't think were important, so I just omitted them. Yours not to reason why, Jamison. You've left out the body of the letter. All right, send it that way and tell them the body will follow. Do you want the body in brackets? No, it'll never get there in brackets. Put it in a box. Put it in a box and mark it, uh, for Gilly. Mark it what? Mark it for Gilly. F-R-A-G. Look it up, Jamison. It's in the dictionary. Look under fragile. Look under the table if you don't find it there. Uh, quotes on quotes and quotes. That's three quotes? Yes, sir. Add another quote and make it a gallon. How much is it a gallon, Jamison? Regard. Regard. That's a fine letter, Jamison. That's an epic. That's dandy. Now, I want you to make two carbon copies of that letter and throw the original away. And when you get through with that, throw the carbon copies away. Just send a stamp, airmail, that's all. You may go, Jamison. Members of the faculty, faculty members, students of Huxley and Huxley students. I guess that covers everything. As a satirist, Groucho, when he delivers a speech, manages to deflate every pompous windbag who ever bored an audience to tears. Here he speaks at a college. As I look out over your eager faces, I can readily understand why this college is flat on its back. The last college I presided over, things were slightly different. I was flat on my back. Things kept going from bad to worse, but we all put our shoulders to the wheel, and it wasn't long before I was flat on my back again. Any questions? Any answers? Any rags, any bones, any bottles, today, any rags. Let's have some action around here. Who'll say 76? Who'll say 1776? That's the spirit, 1776. Here he delivers a speech on economics. The nickel today is not what it was 15 years ago. Do you know what this country needs today? What? A seven cent nickel. Yes, sir. -y. We've been using the five cent nickel in this country since 1492. Now, that's pretty near 100 years, daylight saving. Now, why not give the seven cent nickel a chance? If that works out, next year we could have an eight cent nickel. Think what that would mean. You could go to a newsstand, buy a three-cent newspaper, and get the same nickel back again. One nickel carefully used would last a family a lifetime. I think that is a wonderful idea. You do, eh? Yes. No, then there can't be much to it. Forget about it. Here, he delivers an impassioned fight speech to a football team. Listen, you bunch of butterfingered milksops. The way you're playing, you couldn't beat a girls' basketball team. We've got to win this game, do you understand? Even if we have to use our star play, number 37. You remember it, don't you? The quarterback gets the ball, goes around left end, and makes a lateral pass to the right guard. Sit there. Wait a minute. Boys, if you can't beat that bunch of half-witted goose... Sit there. What do you want? Well, you're talking to the wrong team. I know I am, but our team wouldn't listen to me. Groucho is also responsible for the wildest lecture in medical school history. Let us follow a corpus along his journey. As you know, there is constant warfare between the red and white corpuscles. Now then, baboons, what is a corpuscle? That's easy. First as a captain, then as a lieutenant, then as a corpuscle. That's fine. We now find ourselves among the Alps. The Alps are a very simple people, living on a diet of rice and old shoes. Beyond the Alps lies more Alps, and the Lord Alps those that Alps themselves. We then come to the bloodstream. The blood rushes from the head down to the feet, gets a look at those feet, and rushes back to the head again. And finally, Groucho Marx lectures on Africa. My friends, I'm going to tell you of that great, mysterious, wonderful continent known as Africa. Well, sir, we left New York drunk and early on the morning of February 2nd. After 15 days on the water and six on the boat, we finally arrived on the shores of Africa. We at once proceeded 300 miles into the heart of the jungle, where I shot a polar bear. This bear was six foot seven in his stocking feet and has shoes on. Pardon on. me, just a I moment, am... Captain, just a moment. I always thought that polar bears lived in the frozen north. Oh, you did? Well, this bear was anemic and he couldn't stand the cold climate. He was a rich bear and he could afford to go away in the winter. From the day of our arrival, we led an active life. The first morning saw us up at six, breakfasted and back in bed at seven. This was our routine for the first three months. We finally got so, we were back in bed at six day. The principal animals inhabiting the African jungle are moose, elks, and knights of pythias. Of course, you all know what a moose is. That's big game. 
The first day I shot two bucks. That was the biggest game we had. The Elks, on the other hand, live up in the hills. And in the spring, they come down for their annual convention. It is very interesting to watch them come to the water hole. And you should see them run when they find it is only a water hole. What they're looking for is an elk hole. One morning, I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I don't know. Then we try to remove the tusks. The tusks. That's not so easy to say. As I say, we try to remove the tusks. But they were embedded in so firmly that we couldn't budge them. Of course, in Alabama, the Tuscaloosa. But uh, that's entirely irrelevant to what I was talking about. We took some pictures of the native girls, but they weren't developed. But we're going back again in a couple of weeks. You are listening to the immortal finger of Chico Marx. Chico did to music what he did to the English language. Here he is in recital. I tell you what I do, I play you one of my own compositions by Victor Hoyle. Make it short. Chico's technique was obviously limited, his repertoire was not. Here he is in a popular vein. in a classical vein. You ready, boys? Let's go. his thing. One of the high points in every Marx Brothers movie are the songs, particularly when they are sung by Groucho. Here's a collector's item. The original, Hooray for Captain Spaulding. Hooray for Captain Spaulding, the African explorer. Did someone call me Schnorra? Hooray, hooray, hooray. He went into the jungle, where all the monkeys throw nuts. If I stay here, I'll go nuts. Hooray, hooray, hooray. Bye. 
and on the subject of collector's items, here, Groucho does his thing with Chico in the famous, or infamous, viaduct routine. Now, here is a little peninsula, and uh, here is a viaduct leading over to the mainland. Viaduct. I'm all right. How are you? I say, here is a little peninsula, and here is a viaduct leading over to the mainland. All right. Viaduct. I'm not playing ask me another. I say that's a viaduct. All right. Viaduct. It's what I... Viaduct. Why are no chickens? Well, I don't know why no chicken. I'm a stranger here myself. All I know is that it's a viaduct. You try to cross over there in a chicken and you'll find out why a duck. I know for some place I it's, just... It's deep water. That's why a duck. It's deep water. That's why a duck. Look, look, Rem. So, suppose you were out horseback riding and you came to that stream and you wanted to ford over. You couldn't make it. It's, it's too deep. Well, why do you want to with a ford if you got a horse? Well, I'm sorry the matter ever came up. All I know is that it's a viaduct. Well, look, all right. I catch on the wire horse, so why a chicken? Why this? Why that? I don't catch on the wire dog. Now, I was only fooling. I was, I was only fooling. They're going to build a tunnel there in the morning. Now, is that clear to you? Yes, everything except the wire dog. Well, that's fine. Then we can go ahead with this thing. Now, look. I'm going to take you down and show you our cemetery. I've got a waiting list of 50 people at that cemetery just dying to get here, but I like you. Yeah, you're my friend. I like right. you, and I'm going to shove you in ahead of all of them. I know you like. I'm going to see that you get a steady position. That's good. All and right. if I can arrange it, it'll be horizontal. Now, you know how to get down there? No, I now, look, think. now, look for a minute. You go down there, down that narrow path there, until you come to the that little jungle there, you see it? And then there's a little clearing there. A little clearing with a wire fence around it. With that, You see that wire fence there? All right. The wire fence. Oh, no. We're not going to go all through that again. 